There's a race underway in Mali, but here in Timbuktu in the north of the country it's not just a children's game. It's a race to save an ancient slice of heritage. Fintu Sisse works for the Timbuktu region. Her opponents in the race are traffickers in ancient books and texts which are kept in private houses right across the area. Her job is to knock on doors where she's heard talk of the existence of manuscripts dating from the 1500s, the 1400s, some even all the way back to the 10th century. But the illegal traffickers who see profit in history are doing the same thing. We've already found people in the area who are prospecting for those who hold these manuscripts, who were trying already to get to know them and were looking to relieve them of these ancient texts. So it wasn't easy for us. It's not easy to work amid enormous mistrust. People just didn't want to open their doors. To get the doors to open is a long, drawn-out process for Bintu Sisse. Her team has to comb a vast region. In the 14th and 15th centuries, Timbuktu was a world capital of knowledge and culture. The manuscripts have been preserved in the arid climate, kept among families for countless generations. The pillage of these priceless treasures of human heritage is causing consternation at all levels. There's an illegal export trade in our books, but we're doing something about it to stop this intellectual hemorrhage of manuscripts from Timbuktu and the surrounding region. I think the digitizing project developed between the regions of Ronalp and Timbuktu will also put a break on this pillaging and the exportation of these assets. They've just started digitizing 50,000 manuscripts comprising 4 million pages in a project which is being co-financed by the French region of Rhône-Alpes. The plan is to make the documents available to researchers and protect them from the thieves. But there's a titanic struggle against the termites that have no scruples about dining on these ancient records of the African Muslim civilization on which Timbuktu was founded. It's a loss, a loss of heritage. This is people's heritage. And if we don't do something straight away, the day will come when this heritage will disappear altogether. Timbuktu is the link between Maghreb and Sub-Saharan Africa, a crossroads of trade over many centuries. And with the caravans came knowledge. Take the nomads. They have a traveling library. When they move, they put all of the manuscripts in a leather bag, dig a hole and bury it. The populations move on, but after two or three months, they come back. And because they know the land so well, they dig up their library. In some cases, they've kept their libraries, but under tough conditions. I noticed the manuscripts were damaged by water or termites. This is water damage, and that's the result of termites. To restore these tattered and chewed documents, they have to make old-style paper using traditional and modern methods. The project has spawned a rebirth of know-how tying traditions of Timbuktu to the knowledge of literature. We've trained more than 500 young people all over Timbuktu who are cataloguing the manuscripts from private libraries and we dispatched a team of women who are busy restoring the texts. It also gives an economic future to the youth of the region, a reason to stay and build a life in Timbuktu and to rediscover a pride in the region's history. Timbuktu became home to the first sub-Saharan university in the 15th century, a beacon of cultural diversity. The manuscripts cover every subject from religion to the arts, natural science, pharmacology, astronomy, astrology, mathematics, trade and even how to govern well. The hope is that the project could bring about a kind of cultural tourism and an economy based on the manuscripts, professions and knowledge associated with them. The European half of the project is based in France, at Charbonnier-les-Bains, just outside Lyon. 
The vice president of Rhône-Alpes is in charge of the close ties between his region and its African partners. This decentralized cooperation practiced by Ronald region I call action diplomacy. It's down to earth. The population of two different regions which swap knowledge to improve their futures. And decentralized, this isn't a macro economy, it's on a microeconomic level, giving a job which can be sustained to a person in a country who works and raises his family. You can't ignore that if you want to build a world with a balance between wealth and development. 20% of the population control 80% of the development and wealth. You can't carry on like that if you want a developing peaceful world. Historically, the capital of Rhône-Alpes, Lyon, is a cradle of Christianity. It was from here that Catholic priests left as missionaries to West Africa. And the African Museum in Lyon has documented that period since 1861, displaying artifacts brought back by the missionaries. 6,000 items attracting increasing numbers of visitors, 12,000 a year in all, fascinated by the aspects of traditional daily life in Africa, be it social or spiritual. Rhône-Alpes is working with several regions in West Africa, Old Bassin in Burkina Faso, Saint Louis and Matam in Senegal, and of course Timbuktu in northern Mali. Organizers hope the manuscript project in Timbuktu will lead to a museum and a center of higher education where students can learn more about literature and art. Their aims welcomed by the Imam at the Grand Mosque. It's a manuscript of grand valor. Mm -hmm. These manuscripts have enormous value. I'd like all the world to benefit. To keep them jealously in our homes would do nothing for us, because as time goes on, they'd be reduced to ashes and dust. They'd be lost to all of humanity. EU development ministers are looking at whether this decentralized cooperation could be a model to replace the existing forms of development aid. Cooperation between states can sometimes lead to a waste of time and money, with the weight of bureaucracy holding back the machinery of development. It might be that helping town to town or region to region could turn out to be quicker, more direct and maybe more efficient.